This is Redefining the Counterculture on Witten Radio. Make sure to check out our website at wittenradio.com. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Awesome, awesome, thank you for uh, joining us on today's show. I'm super excited to talk with you. Um, so you've got this new film out called Making Coco, and it's um, it's a documentary about your your life, your you know your illustrious career. Tell me, how do you feel about the film? Uh, just now that it's out and people are seeing it, and it just it resonates so much with you know just the human spirit. How do you feel about the film? I've actually started to really enjoy the film. I mean, obviously I enjoyed life, but it's fun to share it with other people. I mean, I think people take a look at athletics and think it's all fun and games and everybody kind of lives the life of Riley, but at the same time, we're still normal people, and I think it shows some of that. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you remember, you know, when you were approached about the film, like how you felt about it, just, you know, I'm sure you felt honored. Was there a part of you that was reserved because – you know, I guess it was, you know, with films like this, with documentaries, they they basically, you know, recap your life and, you know, they talk about the good parts and the bad parts. Was there any part of you that was kind of reserved? Uh, it took a little while for him to convince me to do it. I mean, I've always lived kind of a private life, so it's, it was a little bit of a hard sell for him. But the gem between Donnie Metz, who I've known since I turned pro, and then getting to know Adam a little bit, it, it, it was comfortable with them, which made it easier to do. Absolutely, absolutely. What was the, the filming process like? Um, I mean, uh, were there any parts of it that were particularly, you know, hard for you to get through? Um, or did, would you say that it was relatively kind of painless? Uh, for the most part, it was kind of painless. I mean, it's always tough when you go through stuff with your parents and such. I mean, that always brings up some memories, but for the most part, it, it was interesting to sit and kind of go through life again. I mean, it's it's interesting when you get the opportunity to actually take a look at a second look at your life, see what you've accomplished, see how interesting it actually was without really thinking about it. Absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of life, you know, it's kind of a weird question, but you know, your career, you, you've had such a an amazing career, and you know, people a, a lot of times, what I like. The most about the film was that it really humanized you and it showed, you know, the man behind the legend. Um, would you say, like, if you had your life to do over again, would you do anything different or would you just keep everything the exact same? Uh, you know what? I would probably do it the same because you learn things in life. I mean, I think that's the one thing that sometimes people forget is you don't get a manual when you turn 18 years old and say, hey, this is how life works. You have to live your own life. You have to make your own mistakes to figure out that they're actually mistakes. So life gives you lessons, and it's, living your life is what makes you a better person. Absolutely, absolutely. I completely agree. Um, I want to talk about just, you know, your, your your playing style, and, you know, I want to talk about, you know, how you got into hockey. I know that um, – a lot of people don't really know the story of how you got into hockey. What was it that initially drew you to the sport? Well, my dad played a little bit when I was young. And when I first went out to try out for hockey, nobody wanted to play goal. So the equipment was there. And, uh, nobody wanted to use it. I thought it looked pretty neat and looked like a good idea. So I volunteered to be the goalie and took a love for it from day one. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, goalie is definitely it's definitely a position that, you know, people don't really, I guess, migrate to. They're not just naturally drawn to it. It's, I mean, I would say it's probably one of the, the toughest positions, you know, I mean, without a doubt. Um, and <laughs> I think that, um, you know, oftentimes goalies don't really get the respect that they should. That was another good thing about the film that I really, really enjoyed was just, it, you know, it highlighted, you know, just the importance of, you know, being a good goalie. And, you know, it showed how you dealt with the ups and downs of, you know, playing that position because, I mean, there were good games and we had bad games, but 
you know, you always gave it, you know, your your best effort, and I thought that that was just really, really amazing. Well, playing goal is kind of like life. There's ups, there's downs, there's good, there's bad. But at the same time, as a goalie, you get to make a difference every day. And I think that's the fun part of being a goalie is every single game you make a difference. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But it's fun. I mean, as a kid, you have no idea. You're just enjoying it. The parents have an idea because they're the ones that suffer through it. But as a kid, it's a great position because you just enjoy it. But as you get more serious and get into pro, the best way to look at it is it's a challenge every day, but you also get to make a difference every day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that you, you hit on something there that just really resonated. I mean, making that difference, those small, small steps, like, I mean, because – Nobody's perfect. You're gonna you're gonna fall down. You're gonna but getting back up is key. Um, this next question: How? What is your advice for somebody? Uh, just in terms of getting back up after you know defeat or you know getting back up after a mistake. What what advice would you give to somebody? You know. I think the first thing you have to do is believe in yourself. I mean, you have to have that self belief that you want to get back up. And then I think after that, you have to have a good group of friends. I mean, I've, I was pretty fortunate. I had a great group of friends, and I've had them since I was five, six years old, and they're still part of my life. You have to have good friends. You have to have a good support group. But the biggest thing is you have to have belief in yourself. I think what happens a lot to young kids is they lose belief in themselves. And once that happens, then things seem to spiral out of control. So the biggest thing is believing in yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. I want to go back to, to the documentary. Um, what's the biggest takeaway that you want people to take away from this film when they see it for the very first time? Um, to me, it was so inspirational. Um, hands down, probably the best documentary that I've seen um, in, a, in a while, in a long, long while. Um, when people see this film, what's the biggest thing that you want them to take from it? I think that you can you can make six. You'll have fun in life, but you can make mistakes in life and still be successful. I mean, life, life doesn't always jump out in front of you and make for a smooth road. There's bumps. There's curves. And as long as you believe in yourself, you can be successful in it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you're so right. You're so right. I think, well, I mean, the key to anything is believing in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, you know, who else? Who else is, you know, no one else is going to. So you've got to believe in yourself. And the hard part about life is sometimes you lose a little bit of that. I mean, I know my second year, I kind of lost faith in myself a little bit. But you have to take a look in the mirror once in a while and find a way to fix it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Grant, was it tough making the transition from, you know, being a player to, you know, coaching and just, you know, being out of the sport? out of the sport from, you know, the, the standpoint of playing? Uh, for me, I was lucky. The body was done. I mean, I had a knee that was in need of being replaced. And so I pretty much miled out the body. So it made it a lot easier to transition into coaching. It, it's still different because you miss being around the guys. But by going right into coaching, I was still able to go to the rink every day. You still see the guys. You still have that camaraderie. So for me, it made the transition a lot simpler. But knowing that your body doesn't have anything left in it makes the transition a lot easier than guys that think they can still play and can't find jobs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I see what you mean there. Yeah, because it's almost like, well, I mean, it is like you gave your all and, you know, your body, you know, your your body is proof of that. And so it's almost like, like there's not comfort in it, but it's it's almost like, you know, I did my best, and, you know, this is, you know, this is what it is. So, Well, sometimes it's hard to realize that it's time, too, because your mind still works. Yeah. I mean, I know I, I threw the gear on up until about three years ago, and the mind works just fine, but the body doesn't work. So that's the other hard part. When you're still healthy and they tell you it's time to retire, your mind still thinks you can play. And if the mind thinks you can play, it's a hard thing to get out of. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Man, I never never thought of that, but yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. Um, I wanted to um, talk to you about the film. Um, 
So I know that you've been uh, doing a lot of film festivals. Um, I believe uh, you and your wife were at a festival last night and the night before. Um, do you know um, if the, the film uh, has already begun, like, expanded distribution? Is it available for video on demand? Uh, we haven't yet. We're still running around doing a couple more premieres. And then uh, I believe early in January to go on the other different platforms where iTunes, Netflix, that sort of thing. Very good. So, uh, awesome. Awesome. It, Do you know, um, if, if somebody uh, wanted to, like, screen the film, like any, you know, movie theaters or organizations out here listening to this interview, um, if they wanted to screen, screen the film, do like a private screening or, you know, a public screening, um, how would they go about doing so? Is there a way that they can contact your management or? Uh, they can contact me on Twitter or Facebook or they can contact Adam Scorgi at uh, Scorgi Productions and we'll find a way to make it happen. Awesome, awesome. I love it. I love it. Grant, thank you so much for taking time to do this interview with me. I'm all out of questions, but I just wanted to open the floor to you if there's anything you'd like to say to our listening audience. Uh, hopefully the people that get a chance to see it enjoy the movie and it was it was fun to do, it was different to do, but at the same time it was it was a lot of it was interesting and a lot of fun and it showed me how many friends I still have in the game and that's the best part of the game, is how many friends you make over the course of your career. Absolutely. Yeah. I think friends can really make or break an experience because friends are really what connects us all. And if you have good friends, it can make even the, you know, the, the, the worst experiences, you know, bearable. Not to say that this was a bad experience for you, but I'm just saying like fr the friends that you make and the memories that you create with those friends, that's what we take away at the end of the day. And I think that that's, that's what I saw in the film as well was the, the brotherhood that you had, that you have with those friends. I think that that was, so powerful. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, that's all you have left. I mean, when your yeah. career's over and such, the, the biggest memory you'll have are the people that you became friends with. That's and right. it's like that in life. At the end of the day in life, the one thing you have left are your friends. That's right. That's right. You said a mouthful there. <laughs> awesome. just, it, it sort of simplifies life a little bit. Yeah, it really does. It really does. Yeah, because I know that's the, the, you know, the biggest question is, you know, what's the meaning of life? And, you know, I think everybody kind of has, you know, their own, I guess, feeling or, or thoughts on what it is. But I, I think it's the connections that we make, the, the lives that we touch. The, the that and you'll, you'll find your true friends when things don't go well. It's easy. Oh. When things are going well, it's easy to have friends. When things don't go well... Then you see who your true friends really are. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is right. That is absolutely right. That is so true. Man. So I was pretty We're, fortunate. I had a lot of really good friends that hung with me the whole time. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I. Yeah, it's um. It's amazing. <laughs> This is probably kind of a silly question, but would you say that um, your friends helped help to make you a better player? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I mean, you have good people around you, and they don't let you – your head never gets too high. You never get too low. It kind of keeps you on an even <laughs> keel. Yeah. And, and that's the best part of it. Absolutely. I mean, I've, some of the friends I grew up with in grade school are still my friends. Oh, wow. Man, oh, man. And, and to them, you're not, it's not what you did. It's the person you are. That's right. That's how you know who your true friends are, you know, the, the people that like you for you, your character. They, they were there before, they were there during, and they're thereafter. So those are the friends you really want. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. In addition to your friends, what are, what are some other things that kept you humble? Because, I mean, of course, I was a kid when you played, but um, just through clips that I've seen and, you know, interviews that you've done, you always 
struck, struck me as a, a really humble person. Um, what were some other things in addition to your friends that just kept you humble and, and not, you know? Struggling? I think I was raised well by my parents. I think that was the biggest thing is my mom and dad had always taught me, don't let your highs get you too high and your lows get you too low. There's a lot of twists and turns in life, and if you live and die with each twist and turn, it's going to make life hard. So you just have to kind of stay even keeled where you don't get real excited about the real good things. You don't get real down about the bad things. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's some good advice. Yeah, I mean, you definitely don't want to tend to live in your emotions because it's, you know, it's a, it'd be a roller coaster of a life, you know, to do that. And so I think, uh, it, like, it'd be hard on a person. Yeah, exceptionally hard. Yeah, that's a good point. But, uh, I mean, if, I mean, I've talked to some kids and they think about making rash decisions based on one thing that happens to them. And it's like, it's a small thing. You just take a deep breath, let it go. It's not that bad. That's true. Yet, to them, it's the end of the world because at that moment, it feels like it. Yeah, and sometimes you can you can basically make a situation worse by acting out of your emotions and not thinking things through. And sometimes those those decisions have lasting effects that you know aren't always good. It's true. Sometimes you have to take a deep breath and look at the big picture. It's not easy to do, but sometimes that's basically what you have to do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Man. <laughs> You've given some really good good life advice. Um, I, yeah, this is awesome. I, so, Grant, in, in your opinion, what's the biggest thing, I mean, and and I've asked you about the, the film, but in terms of like your legacy, your life, um, when people look at your life, um, you know, what's the biggest takeaway that you want them to get from, you know, your life and your legacy? Well, hopefully that we leave the world a better place than what I came into. I mean, I think that's why I do a lot of the charity stuff that I do now. I still travel about 200 days a year doing charity stuff. So, I mean, one, I was lucky enough to play a game for a living and being able to do that is a bonus so one of the things that I feel that because I've had that privilege is to be able to give back absolutely absolutely yeah that um, the, the, the work that you do for charity is I think it's stellar I think you know I I looked at some of the charities charities that you're involved in, and I mean, you you do a whole lot, which is good, and I think that that really helps too. At the end of the day, with keeping you grounded and focused, and you know, also giving back because so many people need help, and I think sometimes we get so consumed with our own lives that we forget that there's a world out there and people are suffering and they need help, and so the work that you do is a great example. And um, I think it's just awesome. Thank you. Well, Grant, thank you so much. I really appreciate you know you taking the time to do this, do this interview with me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Awesome. And so I'm excited. So making Coco, um, you know, um, guys, for, if, for those joining us, joining the interview late, um, making Coco uh, will be available on. Um, extended, you know, streaming platforms uh, sometime January of 2019. Um, they are uh, wrapping up with um, film screenings now at uh, film festivals around the country and internationally. And um, we will put the link to the website um, in the body of this post. That way you guys can uh, check back on, you know, when extended release dates will be for the film. That's awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Grant. Well, it's my pleasure. It's great talking to you. Likewise, likewise. Thank you so much. All right. Have a great day. You as well. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Guys, that was our interview with uh, Grant Fuhr. Um, you can check out um, the uh, links to the website. Uh, we'll put in the body of this post. If you're listening to us on SoundCloud, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We're also available on your mobile devices. Um, 
just uh, search the App Store. And last but not least, we're available for Roku. We've got over 200-plus hours of original content programming interviews offering to charge from the Roku Channel Store. Just uh, search for our name. Once you search for our name, you can download the app. Then you can watch it, offer it charge. We've got some news from the Associated Press. The Punisher, a firearm-wielding vigilante, was pulled from New York Comic Con by Marvel and Netflix, something Steve Harsh, who's been attending for years, understands. I do kind of agree with that out of respect for the victims and for the situation. But another attendee, Leo Lawrence, says the Punisher didn't cause the Vegas shooting. That's only punishing the the fans, and it's only letting the idiot that did it win. Punisher or not, security here is tight with the NYPD's heavily armed anti-terrorism unit standing guard. At the Jacob Javits Convention Center in Manhattan, I'm Julie Walker.